guys welcome back so it's been been a while because i don't have enough time to read or to create content or to edit or to even make my own video right now but i am squeezing in the time and i promise that i will try to keep on creating new content because it has actually been really hard especially if you have work and you have a sideline and other stuff related so let's go so my July has been focused on reading YA, young adult books, or anything light. I actually like to read the light books right now because for the past few years, all of my books, all of the books that I have read, have been really, really, really heavy. As in, a lot heavy. And I did like reading. My favorite authors are Murakami and Neil Gaiman, but right now I'm just gonna skip that because I want to read some light stuff. And I want to feel good, especially with everything that's happening right now. I just need to like refresh my mind and stay away from that. And usually I don't read romance books, but I really did read them right now. I gave them a try and we're gonna start talking about them right now. So the first book that I actually read for July is actually, I'm not really sure if it's YA, I don't think it falls in YA, I think it falls more on romance, but I read this because I love the author, I love Cecilia Ahern, I haven't read P.S. I Love You, that's a really big confession, but I have read If You Could See Me Now, and I loved it back in high school, and I was sure that when I saw this book on sale on Facebook, I was gonna like it, so I got this. This is There's No Place Like Here by Cecilia Ahern. So technically, the book na to talks about this girl who looks for missing people. Kumbaga, parang police, but she's not a police anymore. And she goes on looking for the missing people because she can't find closure. Apparently, she has this sickness where she's not really sickness, but she has this obsession that she always has to look for something that's missing. Like if it's a wallet that's missing or if it's a teddy bear that's missing. So that's a reason why she wanted to find people because she wanted to find the lost people and bring closure to the people who were looking for them. And in the process, she actually ends up lost herself when she was about to talk to the person she was going to help. There's my doggy barking. And then we're not just following Sandy Short, we're also following the life of Jack because Jack was actually the one she was going to meet up with in regards to his missing brother. And while he was waiting for her, she suddenly just goes missing. And it's nice how to see the ending of this book go because you're actually giving these people closure for the things they've been struggling with their whole lives, for someone who was missing. For, yeah, for other things that were missing, not just someone actually. And it's really nice because it was a light take on things that are missing. Or actually, it was a light take on you finding yourself. It was more of that. Because technically, if you lost yourself, you're gonna look for yourself, right? So she finds it unexpectedly. And it's very different. The word build, the world building here was really nice. I mean, like... The writer, Cecilia Aaron, was able to create this whole world of lost things. And it's like, yeah, it's like Wizard of Oz. That's why you have these ruby shoes. She was trying to find her way back home. And I don't want to spoil the ending. But I love the book because I wasn't really particularly attached to the character. but or two of the characters in particular, Jack and Sandy. But I do love Gregory. Gregory is the one that Sandy actually does have feelings for in this book and it goes like way back during the time that he would help her. Also, I do not ship the fact that, I'm not shipping for the fact that he was like a professor or a guidance counselor, something like that. I'm not for that, but I do like the relationship that they do have, especially with helping each other. And that's why I love Gregory. If I'm going to give this book like a star, it would be 4 out of 5 actually. It's really nice, it's really light, I enjoyed it. I couldn't read other books immediately after I read this because I wasn't over it yet. And I love it. Okay, for the next book, I keep seeing this book 
online being sold. It's like a lot of people have a copy of this book. It's like when everyone starts selling Percy Jackson or something, then you know there's something about it. And I was so curious because everyone seems to have a copy of this and I don't. But I haven't actually heard much about it. Besides the fact that I do see people have this copy. But so I decided to give it a try. I got a copy for myself. I even got book two immediately. But I have started reading it. I just haven't finished it because it's Weekathon. So I decided to go with Weekathon first. And we have Girl Online by Zoe Sugg or Zoella. Anyway, Girl Online is basically about this young girl, Penny. And Penny goes through a lot of things in her life and she decides that blogging is actually a nice way of putting her feelings out into the world without people knowing it's her. And then after a series of events and her parents actually get this job opportunity abroad, they go fly from England to New York and then a lot of things start happening. Basically, she just met this other guy that started to like her on the spot. Like the first moment that they met, they went out immediately and although that doesn't really happen that much in real life, I think it was cute and apparently there's a twist to the story somewhere in the ending and I did like the story. It's just that I don't know why I don't really remember much about the story except for the fact that they met and they went out and the ending i'm not sure why there are there are some books that when you read you actually remember like oh there was this thing that happened and blah 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 blah, blah. maybe i wasn't paying attention to it that much what i do like about this is how real it showed young love or first crushes or first boyfriends and it was just so real and it did not focus on teenage drama which is what i love most books at this age at the young adult books would actually focus on teenage drama or drama in school and this one mentioned it but it did not delve on that because obviously the writer knew that wasn't the story that she wanted to show and it was just like a side note in the story like a side happening to our main character's life and it's a um, different breeze to that it gives like this different breath of fresh air to finally read a book that talks about love and does not have too much of that drama it just mentions it like something that's passed in passing technically and that is probably why i did enjoy this book it's not really that attaching, so I would probably just give it a 3.5. It was cute, it was good enough, it's just not really that memorable. Now these three books coming are actually part of a series that I have been ignoring for so so long. As in like when I say ignoring, it's because mainly I don't like the cover of this book. The covers to be specific of these books. And I really do hate book covers that actually have a person modeling in front of the book. Like I feel it just ruins everything. I actually like covers that are minimalist or it does have illustrations instead. Or, I don't know, anything other than a person. I also hate movie tie-ins. I really hate those kinds of covers. But when I don't have a choice, fine, I'll read it. But, one of the reasons I have also been ignoring this is because I wasn't a fan of YA and love stories. Well, mainly because of the love stories part. And now that I actually wanted to, I decided to give it a try. And here we go. So our set of books would be the first three books of the selection series. Okay, I stopped at the third book mainly because I wasn't over these first three books. And I wanted to savor that first. I wanted to savor the story of Maxon and America before I head on. And I don't want to move on to the story of, you know, their child or anything. And... What I did love about these series was that, I don't know, I think I 
what I did love about this series is probably because of Max and himself. I didn't like America. Like, come on. During the whole three books, actually more of the second and the third, I was just like, why can't you decide already? It's not that hard. You already know what you're feeling anyway. Or, why are you taking so long? Why are you so hard-headed? And a part of me felt like maybe it's okay to be confused at times, but for you, I don't know, a part of me feels like, especially with what happened with Marley, I felt like if it wasn't your friend, would you speak out or not? That's one. And I do love the character of Maxon. I wasn't really into Aspen ever since the start of the series. I don't know why. And yeah, I just really didn't like America. That's it. When I go through this one by one, I love the selection. I love book one. Um, it did give me that feel of what their world was like. But when I moved on to the elite, surprisingly, I don't remember that much from this book. I don't know why. I feel like there was something missing. And then we go to the one. I just feel like it ended too soon. Like, okay, this is the closure that you've been looking for, that's it. But it wasn't even the closure. Like, it happened so fast. It's like the whole three books were prolonged only to have such a fast and bitin na bitin na ending. Like, what was that? That's it? I wanted more. I wanted to see what happened after. Was it good? It's just... It, there was so much that could have been said within these two books that were not said. Like, whatever happened to the rebellion? Whatever... Uh, what was really the cause of the rebellion? I mean, there's just so much. You could have said more about the world they were in through these two books. Because you were able to introduce it here. But you were not able to continue it with these two books. The Elite and The One. It just focused on the love story. I mean, I do appreciate that. But the way that you actually did put the rebellion could have been more. I just want to say that there, yeah, she could have just used the rebellion even more to her advantage as a writer. Instead of just ending it so quickly with a love story. Like, you already introduced it to us. Why just take it back so suddenly? Okay, that is my wrap up for my July reads and so far I have enjoyed all of them so now I'm gonna move on to my Wikathon to be read pile. I actually read one already but I'm not gonna say anything about it and the reason why I chose these books is because they are the ones that I have right now. And I'm going to try to finish all of these books because again I have work so it's really really hard to balance all that and of course household duties and i will try all right so back to the books that i'm going to read this month we have first off we'll be doing ricky lee uh which is parake b parake b is a collection of stories on love that actually somehow at the end they all turn or they all merge together into one story and so far if I'm going to be honest, I really love this book, but I don't want to spoil it yet. I just think that if you're going to look for a book that's either in our own language or talks about love, this is probably one of the first books you should find or read. I actually read it in one sitting because it was that good. This book is really good. If you're looking for something light, it's like a mix of light and Murakami and and love all at the same time. Not sure how to really describe it, but it's that Ricky Lee magic that you're looking for. It is all in here. Also, I forgot to mention that this actually, the different stories here in Parakebi do mention, first of all, um, ta some taboos in Philippine society are actually mentioned here, so which is the love of two siblings, uh, LGBT, what else? Kili, of course, does not fail in mentioning social awareness and politics in his books, even though it is not, you know, it is not highlighted 
or emphasize it is still there and I suggest that you should really read next we have Orosa Nakpil Malati I don't have any particular prompts that I'm following again I'm just following what I have here at home so this is a book on LGBT it talks about our main character who has his escapades and gets involved in other stuff and in the end he actually gets HIV and that is all that the summary says my boyfriend gave me this book because he said it was a classic and this is also written in Filipino I've actually seen other people looking for this book and I'm not willing to give my own copy up so I'm definitely going to try to finish this by the end of the month this one is something that was just given to me when I got a whole set of books. It was like a book bundle and this was included. This is The Mango Bride by Miss Sullivan. And The Mango Bride, apparently this was originally written, originally, originally written in English and this was just translated in Filipino by Danton Remoto. And this is a national bookstore copy but it talks about two women in a different country in america whose lives somehow merge because of something it doesn't say exactly here and they in the end they must decide they both left their lives in the philippines to pursue a dream that they want in the states and because of something related to their dreams, they run into each other and now they must decide. I'm not exactly sure what they have to decide on, but it's there. So again, this is a Filipino translation, but I'm hoping that I can actually finish this too by the end of the month. Now for our last book, we have Patron Saints of Nothing. As you can see, I already have like annotations here and a bookmark of where I left off. See, I last read this last night and I'm going to continue again tonight but just to be clear, I have a hard time trying to continue with this because it's not because of writing was bad, no, it's not really like that. I have a hard time continuing it because it's so heavy. It's it's relevant to what's happening right now. I mean, like, if Randy Rebite hasn't written this last year or a few years ago, he probably would have written it somehow again right now with all the COVID things, with everything that's been happening since COVID, especially with our government. So the, the reason why it's so heavy to even read is that Patron Saints of Nothing is the existing account of fi literary fiction that talks about EJK and the politics or the secrecy and the corruption of our current administration in the Philippines. That's why it's so heavy to read because there are parts here, actually majority of the parts that are written here are really true and based on facts, especially right now here. He even named drop some of our victims which are Kian de los Santos. And he also mentioned the current state of Senator Laila de Lima. So, you know, if you guys want a crash course on Philippines, the history, and other things about us, our current situation right here, this is a good interview. This is written in English, so even foreigners can actually read this book. And I know it's published internationally, so you guys can get your own copy. I only got this like last month, and I'm so glad I got this. But I'm trying so hard to finish it because it's that heavy. And I'm just really thankful that our author was really, really brave in writing this book. And was really brave in featuring the current situation of our country. Thank you guys for sticking around until the end. I know the light is a bit bad and harsh right now on me. But I am shooting this at night here. And thank you. And let me know have you guys read any of these books or what are on your to be read books in regards to Filipino authors or about the Philippines at least. And comment down below 
your suggestions for Filipino authors. I'll try to read them as much as I can. And I'll see you guys. And also, don't forget to follow me on my social media, on my Twitter, IG. They're all down there. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you liked it. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts about Filipino authors or Filipino books. I'll see you guys.